Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Kliotsov with Pratna Shaker, who's going to talk today about visualizing differences in analog design. So Pratna, when you think about analog, that's a completely different world than the digital design side, simply because you're dealing with uh, shapes and circuits that uh, are not necessarily numbered the way they are in the digital world. What sort of problems do you run into with that? Right. So as you correctly pointed out, most of the DM tools or the data management tools out there, um, they have the diffing of text files completely nailed down. So um, if you think about it, the digital designers have it a little bit, um, digital front end designers have it a little bit easier with dealing with text files and differences between different versions of text files. Uh, but in the analog world, you're really talking about um, uh, complicated schematics and layouts evolving over a period of time and um, having um, the need to work on different versions of different designs you need to keep track of what happened uh, in the previous version versus what, what are you going to work on next. You've got a second problem here too, right? Which is that analog designers typically have not adapted well to tools and tools have not adapted well to the analog designers. That is true. So um, the, the problem here is that if you are, are trying to think about um, keeping on top of what changes happened, um, uh, so for example, let, let's take a real world example. Um, say you're working on a design for an AFE analog library, or it's, it's the top cell, and um, uh, you, you've basically completed your schematic and um, you're trying to pass it on to a layout engineer. Now, the challenge here is, the first challenge here is the communication portion of it. So the digital uh, or, or the schematic design engineer now needs to communicate exactly what changes went into the design so that the layout engineer can come in and do the back end portion of it. So why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So Pratna, when you think about analog, there's companies that have focused on that have produced thousands of different versions, even with slight changes partly because they haven't necessarily had the tools to say, here's a change that needs to be done that's very deep, here's a change that can be very, very superficial. How does this work? Right, so um, as you mentioned, there's going to be a lot of different versions of a chip design. And in this specific example, if you take it, um, let's say there was a previous version that had uh, of the schematic that had a few objects or instances that were uh, added or removed in the next version of the schematic. And um, if you did not have a tool to keep track of these changes and uh, figure out exactly what changed, you're most likely not going to be able to um, uh, you know, do a more efficient job at doing the layout for this design. And you think about the digital world, really the, what, what you're coming out with there is uh, changes that are very, you can put on a spreadsheet, whereas what you're doing in analog is more visual, right? It is. So um, if you were to think about um, what a digital designer or front-end person has to deal with, it's mostly text files. And um, um, w when you're looking at uh, text data, uh, your brain is kind of tuned into seeing um, the changes easier. It, it's, it's much more uh, easier to see what the changes are in a text file as opposed to a graphic intensive design like the schematic or a layout uh, where not only are there many uh, interconnect wires that are overlapping and um, going from one corner to the other and um, there are more subtle changes like uh, CDF parameters of an existing instance that have changed so if you simply have to look at a picture and say what has changed, that's going to be quite challenging and time consuming. It's fairly well known how teams work in the digital space. Is Do teams work the same way in the analog world? Um, yes and no. So in terms of um, sharing or uh, in terms of working on the same designs and checking in new changes and having a handoff flow between one engineer to another engineer in that aspect they're they're very similar you do have to go take the design through various stages whether it's analog or digital design with analog design though the challenges between say for example you have a, a schematic designer who is uh, making some changes in his design and now he is handing this off to a layout engineer 
the layout engineer has to be able to find what changes were made from the previous version so he can alter his layout accordingly. Now the challenge here is that uh, if you did not have a visual uh, tool that could tell you exactly what portions changed, chances are you're also making some other e edits to portions that you did not intend to. So what kind of changes are you really trying to keep track of? When, when you're talking about schematics, you have uh, objects like wires or uh, interconnects, which are more superficial, uh, cosmetic, but, but, but in, um, if the wire changed a little bit, um, um, you know, if it became a little bit uh, longer or shorter in a schematic, it did not really, it doesn't really matter. So that's considered as a cosmetic change. Uh, whereas uh, functional changes involve adding or removing of an instance or um, a CDF parameter of, um, a, uh, for example, a MUX changing. Uh, so those kind of uh, objects and changes are what's kept track of, what needs to be uh, kept track of in a schematic. So if you think about analog circuits versus digital circuits, analog circuits are very susceptible to things like noise, various types of noise. What happens here with that? Well, um, in this case, it's a schematic. It doesn't matter as much. But if you were to talk about layouts now, um, increased um, length wire or inter interconnect wire lengths and um, uh, or reduced lengths or uh, the thickness of a wire, all of those um, um, cosmetic uh, um, changes do matter a lot. And so in a layout, we would keep track of uh, all of those things and give you an option to choose between do you just want to see um, the, the metal um, changes or metal layer changes uh, or do you want to focus on just one portion of it and, and see um, if any new layers were added or removed? Uh, and this is all in addition to keeping track of added or removed or changed instances. And this is particularly important these days because you think about an autonomous vehicle, for example, there's a lot more um, analog content in there than there ever was before in some of these designs, right? That is absolutely right. And um, so the complexity of the designs themselves are increasing more and more, especially the analog portions. And um, you are talking about um, multiple levels of hierarchy and keeping track of changes in different um, hierarchical levels. And without a tool to figure out what's happening in an entire chip hierarchy, it's going to be um, very hard, if not impossible. So as you're starting to make changes here, and th in analog this is very complicated, how do you make sure that you're changing just the part that you want to change? This has never been effectively done in the past. That's a very good question. And um, so what you can do, is, I mean, with this example I've explained, uh, how you can keep track of what changed between two versions and then um, develop your layout based on the results of those changes. But w where um, it can really be beneficial to you is if you um, had this tool, which we have, um, and basically look at the changes in real time when you're developing it and um, be able to uh, ensure that only the intended portions have been edited before you actually commit your changes. Uh, that's um, critical in trying to save you time, number of respins that you do. You don't have to wait for your design to be completed, uh, checked in, your simulation to complete, and then go back and find out, oops, I, I basically touched uh, another portion that I wasn't supposed to. So um, you can do the verification um, of the design based on the uh, visual design diff reports and make sure that you have, for example, an ECO change and you've changed only the portion that was supposed to be in the ECO um, and, and nothing else before you check it in. So are the demarcation lines between what you're trying to change and what should not be changed as clear as they are in a digital design? Uh, not really. I mean, in analog design, it is very challenging if you're trying to find out um, especially in a layout, what metal layers uh, have changed in size or shape or um, uh, and, and also in, in terms of schematics, if you're trying to find out if there are some subtle changes like uh, parameters of existing instances that have changed, then um, it, it's very hard uh, when compared to the digital world.
So if you're going to make changes, is there a way of doing something like pathfinding in the digital world where you can understand what the impact is going to be and what, when you make those changes, how it's going to impact the rest of the design? Definitely. So, um, and it's very important to have that kind of a feature too, because um, when you're updating your work area, you, you've all of a sudden gotten new versions of um, a lot of different files um, uh, that have been checked in by your colleagues. Uh, and you do want to have a way to uh, preview the changes uh, before they come into your work area. Um, so for that, th there is an update preview feature where you can simply preview the updates ahead of time. And in that um, same interface, you have the option to just diff um, the versions um, by clicking on hyperlinks and, and you can immediately see the visual differences and it also generates a uh, differences um, UI which you can use to simply uh, click on a difference um, and um, focus or zoom into that particular difference, um, click on a, another difference, go into the hierarchy where the change happened so you know exactly what changed in your entire hierarchy um, or what is going to change even before you get the um, updated versions in your uh, work area. So really what you're doing is adding a level of abstraction onto the analog world. That is correct. Pratna Shaker, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Ed.